Yeah. Cycle eight is my darians. So these are our jellyfish and sea anemones and corals and hydroids. Okay, so. So here's a bunch of pictures of the different kinds of things you'll find in phylum Nidaria. Okay, so this is a Portuguese man of war. We'll talk about this guy, the cycle. Um, hydroid, moon jelly, okay, sea anemone, and then just a couple more pictures of jellyfish because they're really cool looking. So, yay for jellyfish. Okay, and here's your a short little intro video for you about the box jelly. All right, so box jellyfish, the most deadly um, animal in the world, actually. The most venomous animal in the world. Um, did you catch that, that if, like, one tentacle of the box jelly can kill 60 people? Yeah. So just one of those tentacles can kill 60 people. So that's how crazy intense this toxin is that they produce. And... Uh, no, but depending on how much of the tentacle you get stung by, you can die in about four minutes. So it's, a, it's very painful. Basically what it does is it stops your heart. So you, you, your heart stops and you die. Yeah. So um, it's a very painful sting. Okay. Um, there's different kinds of box jellies. The big box jellies are probably some of the more deadly ones. But there are like these little mini ones that are called irukandji that... Um, will produce, you get stung by it, and then like 20 minutes later, you don't know you get stung, and then 20 minutes later, you like are in intense, crazy pain. And you're in intense, crazy pain that morphine can't really help for about three days. Oh. So, <laughs> yeah, not fun. Yes, Liam. We'll spend a whole day talking about box jellies. It'll be awesome. All right, and then here's just a little known fact that we, um, we've actually recently discovered a jellyfish that is considered to be biologically immortal. So you have two forms of a jellyfish. You have a polyp form. Think of like a sea anemone. That's like a polyp form of a, of a cnidarian. And then you've got the medusa form, which is the jellyfish form. Okay, and the medusa form is considered to be the sexually mature stage. Okay, that's like the adult stage. So in these immortal jellyfish, in their medusa stage, they can actually revert back to their polyp stage, which is their immature phase. So essentially, these jellyfish can like go from being an, an adult, think of, you know, you're 80 years old, and then you convert back to being a baby and you live through your life again. So like that's what these jellyfish do. So they're considered to be immortal because they can reverse, go back to their juvenile stage, and then live again. They have not tagged any. 
Um, but so they're theoretically immortal, but they do get eaten right in the food chain um, all the time. And so we've never actually observed for like a long period of time one that just kept switching back and forth because they do die from natural causes like getting eaten. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. What if you had one that could have eaten? Then, as long as it's probably by itself and it's got all the food and stuff that it needs, hypothetically it could live forever. It's crazy. No, it, like the jellyfish stage, think of like a jellyfish that reverts back and becomes like a sea anemone, which is its juvenile stage. And then that sea anemone grows back into the medusa stage and then back to the sea anemone, back and back and forth. So it just like lives its life, reverting back to being young. But it looks the same the polyp? No, it looks different. It looks different. The polyp stage will look different from the medusa stage. Okay, so we are in phylum Cnidaria. These are jellyfish, sea anemones, corals, sea fans, sea whips, <coughs> hydroids. Okay, the Portuguese man of war is a type of hydroid. So this picture right here, bottom left, the big purple thing, that's a sea fan. Okay, here's a hydroid, another type of hydroid. Up close look of coral, and then here's a sea whip up here. Okay, so lots of different kinds of things, plus jellyfish and anemones that are found in phylum Nigeria. Okay, so Nigerians are soft-bodied creatures. Okay, so soft-bodied creatures. How many of you have ever touched like the bell of a jellyfish or touched like a sea anemone? Okay, yeah, they're, they're soft, so they're kind of squishy, right? So they're soft-bodied animals, they don't have any bones, okay? Um, and they're radially symmetric. What does radially symmetric mean? Good. So you can divide it more than one way and still get mirror images, right? They're radially symmetric, and they have tissue layers. So sponges only had a cellular level of organization, right? They just had different kinds of cells. Um, jellyfish, cnidarians, have tissue layers. So they actually have different kinds of tissue. They have the endoderm, the ectoderm, and then the mesoglea, which is in between the two. So the endoderm is the innermost lining of the body, okay, and that will surround this thing that we'll talk about, which that is called the gastrovascular cavity, which is where all their digestion takes place. So the endoderm's on the inside. Um, the ectoderm is the outside, that's the side that you would like touch, okay, if you ever touched a jellyfish or a sea anemone. And then in between the two, you have the stuff that's called mesoglea, okay, that's like the jelly-like stuff, that's what gives the jellyfish their jellyfish name, okay, because it's got this like jelly-like consistency, okay. So, mesoglea in the middle. Um, cnidarians are arranged where they have their mouth in the middle, um, and then they've got tentacles that surround that mouth that have stinging cells on them. And they have two phases of life, okay, or two um, like body forms that you can find them in. They have a polyp and a medusa stage, okay, and we'll look at what those look like. And they do have different tissues. Okay, so here's your polyp and your medusa stage. Um, the polyp is like your sea anemone that's here on the left. It's an attached form, okay, so it's sessile. For the most part, it doesn't move, all right? Um, and so in a polyp, it's got a basal disc at the bottom that's attached and like sections to the surface, and the mouth faces upward and then the tentacles surround the mouth. In the medusa phase, okay, that's over here on the right, um, it's not attached, it's mobile, okay, this is a plankton stage because right, it can't swim against the current. Um, and so the mouth faces downward and then the tentacles surround the mouth um, facing downward. So polyps are normally attached. I say normally attached because they can move if they really, really, really want to. Okay. So um, let's watch. No, so this, in, in this, the starfish is actually trying to eat, there we go. The starfish is actually trying to like eat the jelly, the sea anemone. So the sea anemone is not too happy about it. So he's trying to sting the sea star. Yeah. Trying to the star, it's moving slowly. Yes, very slowly. Okay, and so, okay, you're not gonna leave me alone? Well, 
so I'm just going to swim away. Yeah. So, just swims away. Yeah. Hey, it's not going to swim very well, but at least it can get up and get away if it needs to. So. Um, no, it's actually like lifting itself up and moving itself away. Um, no, here. Okay, so um, this is your life cycle of a jellyfish. Okay, so you've got like, you get your little larva that settles down and becomes a little polyp. Okay, this is like a small polyp. Okay. okay? little polyp and then this polyp will divide initially and then create jellyfish this is the sexually mature phase where they will produce eggs and sperm to create the larva and then create these little polyps sea anemones they're much bigger they're actually like they're going to stay a sea anemone they're not going to they're not going to become a jellyfish so okay so here's your different tissue layers um, both of these body forms have this thing that's called a gastrovascular cavity Okay, and um, that's where all the digestion of the jellyfish or sea anemone is going to take place. Um, and so this gastrovascular cavity only has one opening, okay, the mouth. So when they capture food and they bring the food into their mouth and they digest it in that gastrovascular cavity, if there's any waste product, those waste products exit out the same way. Okay? So any waste products also leave through the mouth. One opening into the gastrovascular cavity. Um, so that's what it looks like. The yellow part is the gastrovascular cavity. All right, so we're going to look at the different classes of cnidarians, and then we're going to talk about how cnidarians carry out all of those essential functions that we've been so eager to talk about. Um, so the first class of cnidarians is hydrozoa. Okay. These are mostly polyps. Um, if they do have a medusa stage, but um, that's very, very short. They're typically just polyp. Um, and actually, they live in these things called colonies. Do you guys know what a colony of animals is? A group, a group of animals okay, that are all living together, and each of them is performing like specific functions to keep the whole group alive. Okay, So the polyps are specialized a lot of times to keep um, the whole animal alive. They don't have to be specialized, but they can be like um, the Portuguese man of war. So the Portuguese man of war is actually not a jellyfish, it's a hydroid. And you know the form that you see with like the thing that floats on the surface of the water and then all the tentacles hanging down? Those are actually, that's actually its polyp stage. Okay, so what that is is that's actually a bunch of animals that are living together in a colony. So you have one polyp that's actually specialized to become the float of that animal, that thing, that big bubble that keeps it up at the surface. You've got other um, polyps that are specialized to hang down and be the feeding tentacles, and you've got other ones that are specialized to be the reproductive tentacles. So though that Portuguese man of war is actually a bunch of animals all living together, which is kind of cool. So it's a hydroid. Here's your a little picture of a mini hydroid. This is a hydra. This is a freshwater species of hydroid. Um, so that's what they look like, a little polyp stage. Schiphozoans. Okay, those are jellyfish. Okay, so that's what you, all jellyfish are schiphozoans, real jellyfish, true jellies. Um, the medusa is the dominant stage of life, so that's the part that you see that you think of when you think of a jellyfish, but they do have a very, very short polyp stage um, that then becomes the medusa. All right? You've got anthozoans, these are sea anemones and corals. Okay, so you've got your picture of your sea anemone. Um, and sea anemones, Okay, they're kind of cool. They have symbiotic relationships with lots of different things, like you know your Nemo's of the world. Um, they do not have a Medusa stage, so the anemones do not eventually become some sort of Medusa stage. Um, and the difference, one of the differences between like sea anemones and corals, um, sea anemones don't secrete like a protective cup for themselves to sit in, whereas corals do. Um, so the actual skeleton of the coral of a coral colony 
is these little protective cups that these little individual polyps all secrete. Okay, so a coral, this piece, the coral that I'm holding in my hands, this is the skeleton of the coral. Okay, this would be a colony of animals. Okay, and so I'll pass it around so you can see, but there's a bunch of little holes in here. Okay, each of those little holes, that's where one little polyp of the coral would sit. Okay, um, and that little cup that it's sitting in, that's its little protective thing that it secretes and sits inside of. Um, and so as it secretes that and it grows, it creates these big, lovely coral colonies, creates an entire ecosystem for other animals to live in. So be careful, please. You can pass it around and look at it. So each of those little holes is going to be a individual animal. Okay, and then cubozoa are box jellies. Um, and we'll talk a lot about box jellies, but there's a picture of one so you can see what they look like. So, lots more to come on them later. Okay, form and function, function in cnidarians. Okay, form and function in jellies. Um, their gastrovascular cavity is where they are going to be doing all of their digestion, okay, um, and where their food is broken down. So, jellyfish are in, and Sea anemones and hydroids are all in this phylum that we call Nidaria, and they get that name because of their nidoblasts or nidocytes or nematocysts. Those are all different terms for the same thing. They're stinging cells, okay? So they have stinging cells on their tentacles, okay? and their tentacles they put into the water, and then things will swim by, and as soon as they touch those tentacles, those stinging cells fire, okay? And when they fire, they shoot into the animal and they inject toxins into the animal. So they're basically like hypodermic needles that are inverted. Okay, so on the tentacles, you've got these little cells called nidoblasts or nematocysts, and they, you've got these needles inside that are like tucked up inside there. Okay, when you touch that tentacle, it triggers that nematocyst to fire and it shoots out this needle, everts the needle, and that needle goes into your skin and injects the toxins into your body. Okay, and that's what you're feeling, that pain, that burning, all of that stuff that comes from like a jellyfish thing is the toxins that have been injected into your body. Okay, so here's like what it looks like. Here's your little unfired nematocyst. Okay, you touch this, triggers it, and it ejects this needle into your skin. Okay, and it is kind of like a mini cellular taser. Yes, um, and notice how these have like backwards facing barbs. Okay. So you can't pull it out. So once it like goes in, it's like hard to actually pull out. So the toxins tend to paralyze the prey, okay, so that the prey can then be pulled into their mouth and then into their gastrovascular cavity and digested. Uh, here, I actually, today's the day of video clips for you. So here's a... Yeah, but here's, watch what happens. So this is, this is like a jellyfish tentacle. Those are the nematocysts firing, okay? So these are the nematocysts firing, okay? That's just in one tentacle, yes. That's in just one part of one tentacle. <laughs> so watch, this one's crazy, okay? So that's, when you touch, that's what's going into your skin and injecting that toxin. But it's like, yeah. is there like an immediate, like, like, just like, like, Yes. So that's, yeah. So the toxins go in and they start to take effect and it burns and it hurts and, yeah. But that's what's going on. Um, so notice, okay, that, um, so the, the tentacles have all of those nematocysts on them, um, but like the other parts of the jelly's body does not. So you can touch like the bell of the jelly and it won't sting you. The, the nematocysts are only located on the tentacles, okay? Um, and then they are pulled into the gastrovascular cavity. Okay, 